Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. In today's video, we will dive into JMeter and its features. Additionally, we will explore the differences between JMeter and one of the popular load testing commercial tools. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The Apache JMeter is an open source Java based performance testing tool designed to load test and measure the application performance. It was originally designed for testing the web applications, but it is expanded for other functionalities as well, like REST web services, LDAP, database via JDBC, SMTP, FTP and many more. That means by using JMeters, we can not only test the web applications but also different technologies. It can be used to simulate a heavy load on a server or a group of servers or network. JMeter cannot render HTML pages in the same manner as a web browser. In other words, it won't include the time the web browser is taking to render the web page and display it to the user. JMeter supports Windows, Linux and Mac platforms so that testers can use JMeter in any operating system. Next, let's look at some of its features. For JMeter, there is no concept of installation. We just need to download the latest stable compatible archive from the official JMeter website, unpack the archive into a suitable directory and execute the JMeter executable. For example, to start the JMeter, we need to run the JMeter.bat file for Windows and JMeter.sh for Linux. It has a user-friendly graphical interface that allows users to get familiar with it easily. JMeter is free to use. In addition to that, developers can download the source code for free and do all the necessary customizations based on their requirements. JMeter supports multiple protocols to load and performance test many different applications. For example, Web HTTP, HTTPS, SOAP REST Web Services, FTP, JDBC, LDAP, and many more. It supports command line mode, also called as non-GUI or headless mode, to load test many Java compatible operating systems like Linux, Windows, and Mac. It also supports recording the user actions on the browser for quick and easy script development. JMeter supports a full multi-threading framework that allows concurrent sampling by many thread groups. It also allows allows simultaneous sampling of different functions by separate thread groups. JMeter is highly extensible via plugins. User can extend its functionality with different plugins. For instance, pluggable samplers allow unlimited testing capabilities. JMeter supports dashboard report generation to get graphs and statistics from a test plan. It can also support live reporting into third-party databases like InfluxDB and Graphite. JMeter supports distributed testing, enabling multiple machines to be used for load generations. This will help the testers to simulate a larger number of users users onto their application and evaluate their application performance. It can be integrated with tools and frameworks for continuous integration and continuous testing purposes. For example, integrating CACD pipelines to schedule automated performance test executions. I hope you understand all the explained features. Please let me know in the comment section if anything is not clear. Okay. Next, let's explore the differences between JMeter and LoadRunner. LoadRunner is one of the popular commercial performance testing tools used by many companies. Like I said, it is an open source tool and free to use. It is helping organizations to save their tooling budget and at the same time performance test their applications to evaluate its performance. Whereas LoadRunner is a commercial tool with licensing costs involved. If someone would like to performance test their application using LoadRunner, they may need to acquire licenses from OpenText. In general, the licensing depends on the number of users and protocols required. For JMeter, there is no concept of installation. We just need to download and extract the archive into a suitable directory and run the JMeter executable like JMeter.bat for Windows or or jmeter.sh for Linux. For LoadRunner, we need to install the software in the same manner as other softwares before using it. JMeter supports multiple platforms like Windows, Linux, and Mac. LoadRunner supports only the Windows platform. However, the load generator component can be installed on Linux platform. JMeter has a comprehensive and user-friendly GUI, nothing but graphical user interface. JMeter parameters are easy to define and understand. In JMeter, scripting is simpler and clearer. Adding and defining elements is more intuitive. One screen shows you everything you need the script, the scenario, and the analysis. Whereas in the load runner, the scripting configuration, scenario definitions, and analysis takes place in separate interfaces. So you need to master all those interfaces to do the performance testing. While JMeter does support scripting elements, you are really not required to do any scripting for your test to run properly. Testers can run a complete load test without knowing a bit of code. On the other hand, load runner requires scripting knowledge. If you don't have basic programming knowledge in C, it will be little challenging to develop the load runner scripts. This creates an obstacle, lengthens training sessions, and makes each load testing cycle take more time. Being JMeter open source, it has a large community contributing to its development, providing ample resources, plugins, and support forums. LoadRunner is supported by OpenText with dedicated support. However, it might have a comparatively smaller community compared to open source tools. JMeter is highly extensible with a wide range of plugins available for customizations. So, testers can deploy the required plugins to meet their requirements. LoadRunner offers a structured environment but might have limitations 
limitations in terms of customizations compared to open source tools. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me. I hope you understand the concepts explained in this video. In case anything is not clear or requires more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with our next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.